night. Thank you for coming. And this night, who is on duty is the Cassaba North. And so we welcome you to the Cassaba Holy Week meditations under the theme, Following Jesus to the Cross. I'm going to read the introit and then we will go into the songs of praise led by the praise team. On this day, our Lord remained in quiet meditation in Bethany, reflecting on and preparing himself for the ordeal he was soon to experience. In the evening, he went to the home of Simon the leper, while there, a woman anointed his body with very expensive ointment because of her deep love and compassion for him. And Judas Iscariot bargained with the chief priests to betray Jesus to them for money. Let us worship Christ, who for our sakes allowed himself to be anointed betrayed and condemned to die on a cross. We we'll now have songs of praise led by the praise team. We now have the call to worship. Jesus said, if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. I 
No one comes to the Father but by me. as we sing blessed be the name of the Lord he is our strong tower and we run to him and we are safe
yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Continue to lift up Jesus as we Hallelujah. exalt him Hallelujah. and we give him all Hallelujah. the praise. He's Hallelujah. high, high above all the earth, Amen. the sea and the sky. Amen.
Please remain standing. Please remain standing if you are able to. As we give God thanks, the prayer of adoration and confession will be done by our brother, Barrington Pottinger. Good night, church. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you tonight, we honor you, we lift you up, we give you the glory, the praise. Lord God, you are worthy, O God, and there is none like you. As the songwriter says, I search all over and couldn't find nobody. No one to compare like you, O God. And so tonight, Lord, we just want to thank you that we are here tonight in your presence, lifting up and magnifying your holy name, O God. Because, Lord, that's the only reason why we are here, to worship you and to give you the praise that you deserve. Because you are God and God alone. You are God all by yourself, dear God. And there is none like you, dear Father. And so tonight we exalt you, O God. We lift you up, we glorify your name, dear Father. Tonight, Lord, we ask, O God Almighty, that you would just remove everything in us that is not of you. Fill us with your love, your grace, and your mercy. Empty us, O God, of everything, O God, that is filthy, everything that is not of you. Fill us with your love and your Holy Spirit. Give us a fresh touch tonight as we come, O God, to magnify your name, O God. That as we leave here tonight, we will not leave the same way we came, but we will be full of you, O God, rejoicing in your Holy Spirit. Rejoice Rejoicing in your name, O oh God. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that as we sing to the glory and honor of your name tonight, that you will just lift our voices, touch our voices, O oh God. We pray for the musician, we pray for the preacher, and every single member here tonight, O oh God, as we glorify your name, dear God. Lord God, we know what the devil wants to do, dear Father, but we come against him right now in the name of Jesus. Because the devil only come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. We pull down every stronghold, dear Father God. Every trap, every sneer, everything that the devil has set, we tear them down right now in the name of Jesus. That we will have a free flow of your Holy Spirit and a free flow of your worship tonight without no endurance, O oh God Almighty. Lord, we bless your name, we magnify your name, and we lift you up, O oh God, because you are worthy to be praised, O oh God. Be with us tonight, O oh God, throughout the service, O oh God Almighty, and let your will be done, Lord. In the most holy and mighty name of Jesus, we pray, now and forevermore. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. Our responsive reading this evening will be from Psalm 40, and it is printed in, on the screen above. Let us stand, if you are able to. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. This is the one who trusts in the Lord. Those who turn aside false gods. Many, Lord, my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you planned for us. None can compare with you were I to speak and tell of your deeds. They would be too many to declare. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire. For my ears you have opened burnt offerings and sin offerings you do not require. Then I said, Here I am. I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. Your law is within my heart. 
I proclaim your saving acts in the great assembly. I do not seal my lips, Lord, as you know. Do not withhold your mercy from me, Lord. May your love and faithfulness always protect me. For troubles without number surround me. My sins have overtaken me, and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails within me. Be pleased to save me, Lord. Come quickly, Lord, to help me. May those who say to me, aha, aha, be appalled at their own shame. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for your saving help always say, the Lord is great. Together, but as for me, I am poor and needy. May the Lord think of me. You are my help and my deliverer. You are my God. Do not delay. We give God thanks for his word. Praise God. You may be seated. At this time we will sit and sing. We will glorify the King of Kings. Wednesday night of the Cassava Holy Week meditations and Cassava North is on duty tonight um, comprising mainly Mambi Park I don't remember all of the churches that are in the zone <laughs> Red Hills Baptist Mambi Park um, but we're here giving God thanks and I just want to say, I know it is not by accident that you are here tonight. So if you were not here on any other night, this is your night. Feel free to worship the Lord and be attentive to what the Lord will say to you tonight. Our speaker tonight will be the Reverend Stephen Smith. And as he comes to us, we crave your prayers as he breaks God's word to us and interprets to us what the Lord will be saying to us through him. At this time, we are going to hear the word of the Lord Okay. 
Good evening, my sisters and brothers. I join my colleague in welcoming all of us who are present here in this worship. We thank you that you have decided to come and we worship together as an association. We have decided, therefore, that as an association, instead of holding our Holy Week meditations in individual churches, we would have decided that we come together as, a, as an association wherein we can fellowship with each other, get to know each other some more. Talking about knowing each other some more, we have opportunities that will come up that we will facilitate same. In the month of May, from May 25 to 31, we call that the Cassava Week. In that week, we will have the exchange of pulpit wherein pastors and preachers will be shifted all over the association to preach in the association's churches. During that week also, we hope that we can have what we call the Cassava Bible study, that we meet one place, and we are thinking of the Boulevard Baptist Church that Wednesday night, just like how JBU Assembly would have met on a Wednesday night, we hope that all of us will gather together at the Boulevard Baptist Church, wherein we have one big, gigantic, colossal, bonus Bible study. Um, you'll be informed of the topic um, a little later. During that week, the Saturday of that week, we want to have what we call cassava lime, wherein we just hang out, we chill on a chill spot, we eat some food, those who eat, those who eat chicken and sandwiches, and I will say that and leave that alone, <laughs> right? That's where I stop with all of that. You can and drink soup yeah, and have soup. That's it. And we play and juice, yes. So if you want to have schoolboy guineas, you know schoolboy guineas? Yeah, I know you don't know schoolboy guineas. Those who drink Malta, schoolboy guineas, right? So we'll not facilitate the other type of guineas unless you put it in a paper bag and we don't know it. You know, but, but in other words, we are coming together, play some games and so forth so that we can flex with each other, getting to know each other. So we are hoping then that we will support the plans and the programs of the association. May God bless you, my sisters and brothers, and let us have a worshipful night. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Small. Tonight's scripture reading will come to us from St. Mark chapter 14, reading from verse 32 through to 42. St. Mark chapter 14, reading from verse 32 to 42. And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he saith to his disciples, Sit ye here while I shall pray. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John, and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. And saith unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry here and watch. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping, and saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldest not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed and spake the same words. 
And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Neither wist they what to answer him. And he cometh the third time and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up, let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. The word of the Lord. The Reverend Stephen Smith is our speaker for tonight. And as I said before, he craves our prayers as he comes to us. But just before he comes, we will have a selection from Reddell's Baptist. to you and it's because he died on the cross did that great sacrifice while we are here and we can live and we can breathe and we can worship the king of kings and the lord of lords hallelujah above all powers above all Above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all. Above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you're worth. Yeah. 
Good evening, sisters and brothers. I greet you well in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am coming to you from the cool hills of the Lawrence Tavern circuit of churches. Just adding that bit of information. And I'm here with my lovely wife, Dee Marie Wisdom Smith. Just adding that bit of information. <laughs> the passage of scripture that was read, Mark chapter 14, verse 32 to 42, sums up a very emotional experience that our Savior Jesus Christ endured. And I believe, I believe it therefore is quite fitting for this evening's reflection. So as we prepare ourselves to hear what the Lord will say to us, let us mindfully go to God in prayer. Most righteous and eternal God, nothing we did or do deserves the mercy, the blessings, the attention that you give us. Yet because of who you are, we are blessed and favored by you. Take our failings, we pray, O oh God. Take our sacrifices, we pray. And grant us divine strength, a heart to receive, that we, O oh God, may hear from you and have the strength and courage to do what your word says. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. While preparing this reflection, and I say reflection because I am going to be mindful with the time. While preparing this reflection, I remembered my time in school, in a class, a lecture, 
And oftentimes, I find myself not having adequate sleep. And so I am before a lecturer that is presenting valuable information. But at the same time, I'm having a conversation with myself. And the conversation usually goes something like this. You're tired. Therefore, it is best you rest your eyes. And the other side is saying, no, if you rest your eyes, you will fall asleep. That's a trap. Don't listen. And then the other side would rebut and say, ah, but you will not sleep. You're simply resting your eyes, but you will be awake to hear what is happening. And we know when you listen to the wrong side, how that turns out. Now, it, co it comes to mind because I can empathize with Peter, James, and John. Because we have been in those positions where something valuable is being presented to us, but due to a lack of sleep, we have that conversation with ourselves. Should we rest our eyes? We're not sleeping. We're merely closing our eyes and reflecting deeply on what is being said. But I will borrow something from Jesus in, as he said to his disciples, stay awake. So I'm mindful that many of us may be coming from work. It perhaps was a long week for us, a long day, and we might be a little tired, but I'm just going to ask you to stay with me. All right? Stay with me, and we'll get through this together. Amen? Amen. Now, the text before us, Jesus here was preparing himself for the culmination of his mission here on earth. This was it. This was the big moment. He was anointed at Bethany. He had his last supper with his disciples. He was now preparing himself to take the ultimate plunge into his destiny here on earth. And this caused him to say, I need a little company. I need someone, I, I need persons who would journey with me to the end. And Jesus, in his divinity, decided to call Peter, interestingly enough, the one who he had just said would deny him three times. He called James and he called John. And he invited them into this experience, into his journey to the cross. Sisters and brothers, I want us to just meditate on what this and how significant such a call would be to them as it still is to us today. Jesus called them to journey with him to the cross. And Jesus is calling us, has called, is calling us to journey with him, to take up our cross and make our transformation in him. Now, mind you, the three disciples here understood very little about what was taking place. Jesus simply said to them, come with me. And they went with him to the place Gethsemane, where he asked them, stay with me or in the Jamaican vernacular, Tanya so, and keep watch. Stay with me, stay awake. 
a simple request. And as Jesus made this request, he went aside in anguish because he knew the burden he was bearing. This call that Jesus made to the disciples to stay with him may seem like a simple task, but here Jesus was fully man, and therefore he was experiencing the experiences that we would feel knowing that we're going to one of the, the worst experiences we could ever face in our lives. He was feeling a gulf of emotions. He needed someone to be there. He needed his support. And he called the usual suspects. Those who we see throughout passage would usually be by his side. And he simply asks them, stay with me. Tanya so keep watch. Jesus' request to the disciples was a request for them to stay up, to stay alert and be vigilant. Staying alert and vigilant with Jesus Christ is a part of being in his journey to the cross. This journey to the cross is a call to prayerfully enter into anguish, remembering his sacrifice, how he suffered bled and died for us today. A reasonable request to stay vigilant and alert. I want to say to us, sisters and brothers, I know your eyes are heavy, but stay with me. Keep watch. I want to suggest that from the text, the prevailing and congruent message here is simple, as simple as Mark's writing. It is simply to say, for us to reign with Christ, we must journey with the persecuted Jesus. For us to reign with Christ, we must journey with the persecuted Jesus. In our journey with Jesus Christ, we must be recognized. We must be responsible. And there must be reprieved. We must be recognized. For simply, for us to be called to be with him means that we are recognized by him. Not that we are worthy of his call, but that he knows us. He knows you. And he is calling you to take up your cross and follow him. Secondly, it is a call for us to not only be recognized, but to be responsible. That is, as Christians, or as budding Christians, some of us may be, there are responsibilities within the faith that we must be mindful of and take into consideration as we consider the call. Not so. The true thing. We can't just tell people, oh, all you have to do is say these words. I accept Jesus into my heart and the rest is easy. We must let them understand it is a taking up of one's cross and following him. And thirdly, there must be reprieve. For here it is. It is not only being recognized. It is not only taking responsibilities upon ourselves. But Mark, in his writing, consistently used people who are ordinary failures that go about playing a significant part in Jesus' mission here on earth. So clearly, God takes into consideration who he is using 
and he uses them still. And at the end of it, those who serve faithfully are rewarded. So three prevailing points coming from this argument. That to reign with the anointed Christ is to journey with the persecuted Jesus. Throughout Jesus' ministry, we understand that recognition plays a significant role in how the people at the time interacted with one another. Oftentimes, even writers would use the name of significant people or people who were popular so that their message can be carried over. Now, what is interesting here is that in Mark's gospel, Mark does the opposite for Jesus. Mark carries over some secrecy as to the identity of this man, Jesus Christ. Very little is known about him. In fact, so little that Judas had to indicate to the Jews that I will kiss him so that you will know who you are to arrest. So why then is recognition so big if it was not applied to Jesus Christ? It means, therefore, sisters and brothers, recognition used here is not a call to be elevated, to stand out of the crowd so that people will see and say, yes, see him there. But recognition here means to be recruited. It is a call to be recruited, to do a task, to take up a cross, and to follow Jesus. So when we consider the term recognition, our minds generally go to the elevated, to being seen above others or acknowledged above others, or to be favored. And oftentimes, favor leads to exemption. Not so? Yes, man. When you're there and there's a tendency for you to be favored, you are exempted from certain experiences or certain duties because you either know the person in charge or the person in charge knows you. That's how recognition goes to us as people, as earthly beings. But to God, recognition means being recruited. We are called into the experience that Jesus was called into. And we are now given this task to take up our cross and follow him. Jesus recognized who Peter was. The one who would deny him. But he says, Peter, come with me. I'm, I recognized who you are. And I'm recruiting you. He said, James, come with me. John, come with me. Not because you are brighter than the other disciples. Not because you are better than the other disciples. Not because you come from some rich background with social status, social status or class or whatever. But I'm simply calling you because I am about to use you in such a way that you wouldn't even understand it. To the part where you fall asleep. Imagine if Jesus wants company and him call you and say, come, keep me company. How wonderful a feeling it must have been. However, as wonderful as a feeling it would be, it was not a call to be exempted from his anguish, but rather it was a call to share in his anguish. Jesus, sisters and brothers, is calling us. Jesus has recognized us. And in our recognition, he is recruiting us to be a part of a faith that requires not perfect people. Because Peter was far from. But people who were faithful to the task. People who would stay with him 
on this journey, people not recognize because of what they have accomplished and what they have gained, but people recognize because of who God is. God takes anyone. God takes failures. God takes those who deny him and he turns them around and accomplishes great things by them. So here, a call to journey with Jesus Christ is a call, sisters and brothers, not only to share in Christ's anointed calling and essence or person, but it's also a call to journey with a suffering Jesus Christ. A suffering Jesus who was now here at Gethsemane. A place of ambivalence for Jesus. Because here it is on one hand. It's a wonderful place to be. Because here it's quiet and you can meditate. He can go to God in prayer. And he can ask of God anything. But also, it is a place of anguish. Because he knows his task. He knows what he was about to endure. And therefore, he was conflicted. What a place to be. And what a calling to receive. Not to be exempted from suffering but to be called to share in suffering. If this is what the Christian faith is about, did we give it serious thought before we entered? Did we give it serious thought before we said yes? I hope we did. And I don't mean to scare you, but I simply want us to understand what a privilege what a blessing to be called by God, to share with him, to be recognized by him. Secondly, a call to journey with the persecuted Jesus is a call to responsibility. Christianity is not a free ride. It is not a call for us to receive some status and start there. It is not a call for us to secure our seat at the table and then relax and live out the rest of our lives until the judgment comes. No. It is a call to be vigilant. It is a call to stand watch. It is a call to endure. It was almost as if Jesus was saying to the three, be vigilant, stay awake, keep watch, because the enemy is moving around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. It is a responsibility, sisters and brothers, for us who are called by him, to be mindful of what we would endure when we say and when we profess the name of Jesus Christ. It is not a name that is liked in many circles. It is a call for us to go out into the mission field and to face people who will reject us. It's foolishness they're talking about, which Jesus, I don't tell me a white man. That's what people will say. Many persons question your sanity in presenting Jesus and God in 2024. Clearly, you never went to university. Because if you were an educated person, you wouldn't be talking about Jesus. But we are called to the responsibility to carry the word of God to a lost and dying world. We are called with the responsibility to go to people and communities that would reject us time and time again. And we do not have the option of saying, Mina Godeso. It is a call to be responsible with the word of God 
not to use it for our own benefit or gain. It is a call for us to be alert, to keep watch. Imagine, the disciples no doubt here at Gethsemane, this place where they, 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 they make olive oil. Perhaps we're saying to themselves, perhaps we should journey back to where our beds are, where our lodging is. Because Jesus looked like him not going to finish tonight. So let us go and rest our eyes and we wake up early and come back and meet him. But for Jesus to say to them, stay here. Don't leave. Perhaps, sisters and brothers, we may have a responsibility to stay in this calling of Jesus Christ. To stay in the vineyard, to stay in the mission field and not to abandon Jesus at the most difficult of times. No, it's not a good time, but no, it's the right time for us to be Christians. No, may not be the most attractive of times to witness to people, but no, it's the best time to witness to people. So Jesus telling them to remain and to stay vigilant and to stay awake is a call for us, sisters and brothers, to do the same with the word of God and to the people in the world. Stay with them, but stay vigilant. People around us are suffering. We have a responsibility to them. We must bring the word of God to them. But interestingly enough, it wasn't a mere call for us in the physical, but it was a call for us in the spiritual. For Jesus didn't only say to them, remain here and stay awake. He said, pray. He said, pray. You cannot do it without prayer. You cannot stay awake without prayer. You cannot stay vigilant without prayer. For how will we discern the enemy? How will we perceive a threat if not by God's revelation to us? And how will we see or receive God's revelation if not through prayer? Jesus gave them a responsibility after he called them, sisters and brothers, for us to journey with Jesus, we must be responsible. And thirdly, for us to journey to the cross with Jesus Christ, there ought to be reprieve. Now this is the heavy message and the heavy message is this, that while some of us may think we are perfect, that is not the case. But thanks be to God, God is perfect. And a perfect God has called imperfect people to share in his perfect mission. How wonderful what grace, sisters and brothers, that we can earn a call, that we can receive a call we did not earn. That we can get a place in this process, in this mission, in this mission save the world. And we too need saving. We are failures, but God can use failures to save a dying world. Peter stood out like a sore thumb. For this is the man that Jesus said would deny him. And later, this is the man whom Jesus said, I am entrusting the establishment of the church on you. Wow. 
a failure. Peter perhaps was a perfect failure. In that he got perfect scores in every test. C minus, C minus, C minus. And yet, he, sisters and brothers, received God's grace and mercy. We too, whether we consider ourselves perfect or failures, we too have received God's grace and mercy. We too have received this call. And we too, though we have failed, have received reprieve. This is not because of anything that we have done, but it's simply because of who God is. And sisters and brothers, it is a wonderful thing that God calls us to journey with Jesus Christ. It is a wonderful thing that we, call, that we are called not only to share in Christ's glory, but that we are also called to share in his anguish and grief. Because we too grieve when we see the world going away from God. We too grieve when we see God's people turning their backs on God. We too, like Jesus Christ, must weep for the world and those who mourn and grieve. But if we do respond to God's gracious call, God promises a reprieve for us. God promises to use our little to bring about great change. Then and only then can we share in Christ's glory. So I say to us, sisters and brothers, for us to reign with the anointed Christ, for us to share in his glory, we have received a call to journey with him. A call that recognizes our failures, but calls us still. A call that sees that we cannot do anything of our own, but tasks us with responsibilities so that we may receive the blessed Holy Spirit that will equip us to do God's will. And at the end of it all, if we remain faithful, we will hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. It is my prayer then, sisters and brothers, that we keep watch, that we endure until the end. For the same God who is gracious and merciful who called us while we were yet sinners is the same God who will welcome us to share in Christ's glory when the opportune time comes. Therefore, I pray that God will help us to endure by his blessed Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name, amen. At this time, as we meditate on the word, the opportunity is here, sisters and brothers, for anyone who wishes to come to the altar, anyone who wishes to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, or anyone who wishes to be strengthened anew for this awesome task and responsibility to journey with Jesus Christ. I invite you to come to the altar as we pray with you. Come while the time is here.
The invitation is open, and so if you do need to make that decision, do not leave here without making that decision tonight. I'm going to invite Reverend Sidney Hall to come now and to pray, lead us in prayer. Invite us to bow in a word of prayer. Having heard the challenge of God's word and the call to commitment and discipleship. And so, God of mercy and power, you have anointed so many persons. You have anointed all those whom you call to special responsibility and service within your church. You anointed prophets and priests and kings to be leaders among your people and to bear witness to your presence by upholding truth and justice. You have recruited us not so much as persons who are perfect, but persons who are called and committed to your cause. And you have assigned responsibilities to us. God of mercies, you have inspired a woman to anoint Jesus in preparation for his death and burial. And this evening we pray that you'll anoint us with your spirit, that we may be true to our calling and faithful in our duties. Anoint us with your spirit, that we may be your messengers of hope and peace, in our own time and place. Anoint us with your spirit, Lord, that we may share in his work of redemption and reconciliation. Anoint us with your spirit, O Christ, that we may be prepared for greater service and sacrifice. In your name, Make us more understanding and sympathetic of the faults of others and willing to do good to all. Grant that as we have experienced your love and forgiveness, we may extend arms of love to embrace those who have hurt us. Hear us as we pray for those who are overcome by temptation, those who have drifted away from the faith, and those who claim to be disciples of your Son, but do not follow his way to the cross. Pray that you lead them all to truth and faithfulness and victory. 
Gracious God, as we are gathered together here, we pray for all those who are afflicted and persecuted, that daily they may experience your relief, receive reprieve, comfort, they may receive, Lord, and liberation through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray for those who are weak in the faith, are confused, and are afraid to witness for you, afraid to journey with you to the cross. For those who are unstable in their relationships, and are therefore unfaithful in their living. Lord, have mercy on those who are uncertain about life and are about afraid to face the future. Grant them your spirit of power and love, that strength may replace weakness, certainty replace doubt, and faithfulness replace disloyalty. Grant to each human being the peace which you alone can give, the sense of purpose which comes from knowing you, Christ, as Lord and Savior, and the power which comes from the indwelling Holy Spirit, be with your people as we are gathered here and are about to leave. Continue to speak in accent clear and still. Continue to speak with the voice that wakes the dead. And grant us liberty to serve you. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, freedom. This we pray in your name. Amen. The hymn, We were not there to see you come to this poor world of sin and death, nor did we see your humble home your hidden life in Nazareth. But we believe your footsteps trod its streets and plains, O Son of God.
again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you all for coming and we look forward in seeing you tomorrow evening and we will be observing the Lord's Supper.